Hi everyone, in this video of Accelerated Chess Dragon, we're going to be looking at a game played between Zygbert Tarash and David Janowski. This was played in, in the 1907 Ostend Championship in Ostend, Belgium, and without further ado, let's look at this game. Tarash starts the game off by playing e4, and we have e5 by Janowski. Uh, knight f3, knight c6, knight c3, and now knight f6. Uh, so we have the four knights defense. Bishop b5, bishop b4, and it seems very symmetrical um, until this moment, bishop g5. And the reason why Janowski does not continue to follow the symmetry is because if he plays the move bishop g4 here, then black is actually in for some trouble after bishop takes f6, and now if you play the move queen takes f6, there's a trap, uh, white will play knight d5, black could play anything like queen d8, and after bishop c6, bc6, uh, white will capture the b4 bishop. And you don't necessarily lose a piece as black, but you definitely lose a couple of pawns. Uh, because black can play the move a5, and after knight c6, queen e8, uh, knight takes e5, d takes e5, and you've lost a couple of pawns as black, and your pawn structure is in severe ruins. White can just play the move a4 and follow up with b3, and black is essentially... Uh, very bad in this position already on move 14. So you cannot follow uh, the moves that uh, Tarash plays as Janowski and another reason why you can't do that is because after bishop f6 if you go for gf6 then your position is just completely ruined after knight d5 uh, bishop to a5 and now uh, bishop c6 bc6 there are so many weaknesses around Janowski's king and I just do not want to play this as black. So that is why it's not a good idea to play bishop g4, and instead why Janowski played knight e7. Now, this allows bishop takes f6 and does weaken uh, the king side severely, but Janowski is just going to play the move knight g6, and he's just going to cover up everything on the g-file. So knight h4, and we have c6. Attacking the bishop, the bishop retreats back to c4, and bishop g4. Janowski is just trying to get the most out of his counterplay with all of his pieces f3 and now bishop e6 which offers a trade of bishops but first Tarash decides to play bishop takes f6 uh, we have g takes f6 and after a couple of more trades we have f4 knight g6 is played by Janowski just covering up the g-file and we have a trade on g6 and queen g4 and the idea is to attack both g6 and e6 and if king f7 is played then white is always free to play the move knight e2 and reroute this knight to a more comfortable square but also just f5 is a very nice idea where it just attacks everything and it's very hard to see how you can defend his block so that is why instead of playing the move king f7 we have queen e8 by Janowski. and here Tarash plays f5 ef5 ef5 and before pushing the pawn to g5 we have bishop c3 bc3 and now king g7 uh, it probably would have been a bit better to actually keep this bishop, uh, since maybe later on you could uh, play the move bishop c5 check, and after the king moves, uh, you could play this move g5. Uh, unfortunately, he didn't play the move bishop c5 check, and instead went for a trade on c3, and played king g7. Rook to f3, and this signals that Terash is going all out and going, getting ready for an attack. And the problem with this position compared to a position where you run away with your king, and you don't have to worry about anything, is because you cannot play g5 as Janowski. You just cannot. Because if you do this, then you allow h4. And this is already too much. Because the g5 pawn is very weak, and it's not able to be defended with another pawn. So after you play queen e7, there's just hg5, fg5, and now white can just play f6 check. And after rook f6, queen g5, uh, this is already lost because if you play king f7, then a trade of rooks followed by rook to f1 just spins the queen. So this means that uh, Janowski is very lost if he plays g5, and that is why he just tried to play it cool. Uh, rook to h8. Maybe trying to signal that the rook on h8 is willing to come to h6 and defend. f takes g6. Now, you cannot capture the pawn on g6 because there's always the idea of queen d7 check and after... You move the king anywhere, you lose d6, and even the problem of rook g3 is enough to concern you. 
So that's why queen takes g6 does not work. Now, here, queen e7 was played in the game by Janowski, and we have h4. Getting ready to play h5 and reinforce the g6 pawn again. d5, rook af1, and rook af8. Uh, there is a threat of rook takes f6, and that would just uh, break open the entire position, and Tarash will be very favored in that case. Rook af8. h5 and rook h6. So, Janowski is trying to create somewhat of a blockade and not allow Tarash to really penetrate through. Uh, so Tarash just plays a waiting game. Rook 1, f2, rook h, h, 8, rook, and now queen f5. Queen d6, g4, and now this is how Tarash is going to break through the position. Queen e7, and now g5. And unfortunately, this position is already way too lost for Janowski to do anything else. So, uh, you cannot play the move f takes g5. Uh, I don't really know what another move that I could recommend is. So, Essentially, in this case, f takes g5 is the best move. But after f takes g5 is played, Tarash has a very nice move that easily just wins on the spot. And I encourage you to pause the video and try finding it. Okay, so the move is actually just queen f8 check, and it exchanges all of the pieces, but here you're not actually going to capture the queen. You could capture the queen, and I would say that white would definitely have an advantage. Uh, but here is an even quicker way to win. So if you were playing the game as Terraj, how would you just crush Janowski? Okay, so Terraj actually played the move h6 check. And the idea is that if you play the move king takes h6 or king takes g6, you just lose your queen on f8. But if you try king to g8 to try and reinforce the queen, then white plays h7 check. King moves to either... Uh, g7 or h8, it's really all the same. Rook takes f8, now the king must capture the rook and h8 queen, and we already see how Janowski's lost. So that is why after the move h6 check was played, Janowski resigned the game. He is forced to play something like king takes g6, and after rook takes f8, king takes h6. It'll be a very slow and painful death for Janowski. So that's why he resigned the game after, after Tarash played the move h6 check, and a brilliant victory for Tarash. So I hope you all enjoyed the video, and if you have any suggestions or feedback for me, please let me know in the comments section, and stay tuned for more chess.